Leos, welcome to the urban jungle and the studio of David Sky Tarot. Using the classic Gilded Tarot today. Put that over here. And um, this is the singles reading. I call it Meet the Soulmate. Kind of used to call it. <laughs> I'd still think of it as the four pillars. The four pillars are the four pillars of a good relationship. Are um, emotional in terms of relationship. I think compatibility, emotional compatibility, intellectual compatibility, dose, sexual and love compatibility, and the fourth and final leg of the solid table at four. Lifestyle core values, and in all of that, uh, it's the core values that I think is the deal breaker, right? What's core values? Like, I believe in God, I don't believe in God, I think it's okay to kill people, I don't think it's okay to kill people. Um, the core values, you know, it could be, I, you know, um, you know, I want to. Uh, work uh, for myself and for my art and I want to work for money and I you know, want to succeed and that could be a core value basically like you know how materialistic are you do you want a family okay nice emotional aspect this is your soulmate this is not triggery read this is simply the one that's right for you that's all we're asking we want to get to know them. Ten of Cups, this is in their emotional position. At the top, I read the conscious. And under that, we'll read the unconscious energy, the Queen of Wands, who we separated earlier in the middle of the shuffle. Uh, we separated her from the King. Uh, couldn't have them showing up together. Unless later, but let's see. Here I read also the childhood. I read the emotional nature. Ten of Cups for the Moon. I think this person has a Cancer Moon. I think it's very well placed. It very well might be in the fourth house. I go like that with this. The parents, uh, the story they might tell about their childhood. Um, I think they were like a middle child, in some way a middle child. Uh, they may have three, four siblings. Um, and I don't know, I just keep getting this with this single mom. This Queen of Wands, their mom's a fire sign, you know, uh, Aries or Leo or Sag, a uh, woman, frankly. Um, now, if not, then um, the relationship of the mother and father, you know, maybe they had a fire ascendant in their uh, composite chart, you know. Um, so I get the feeling, though, that this, the person that raised them uh, was very uh, confident, uh, outspoken they would still be alive today they were young uh, when this child was born their parent uh, was a young person I don't know like a teenager necessarily maybe yeah uh, um, but um, they are very brave the parent uh, very strong very outspoken very charismatic um, you will know this this parent will be in this person's life and this is your person uh, and then say they're perfect and I don't I think their parent is very cool you'll be glad to have them it's not going to be like a, this is actually it could be like a sad mom honestly got that feel to it like they would have given them a, a lot of love but they'd have given them all the space in the world and you know sad moms kind of they let you uh, raise yourself a little bit um, you know they'll kind of stand back let you fall and watch you you know more than like a cancer mom's gonna go oh my god no oh my god you could scrape your knee you know, um, um, it'll kind of give you that sort of freedom. So, um, it ended up having like a great childhood. And um, I think this, in their childhood, there was just an atmosphere. Um, 
a little bit like uh, the Waltons or something, you know, um, where a feeling of togetherness, a feeling of family. I, just, I tell you, I feel like it's a single mom, you know, yeah, that's how I feel it. So intellectual position, the Harold font. Hmm, we got Cancer Moon in the hang the hanging man. Major Connor in the intellectual position in both cases. So Taurus, Sun. I'll read the Sun here. This is the intellect, the position of the intellect, conscious and the unconscious. Um, if anything I might see the Mercury here in the hanging man. Keep that in mind. Um, we see the Queen of Wands next to the Hanging Man. Um, so, like I said, your person's moon is very well placed, so it's strong in them. It's at home. It'll take dispositors. It might be in control of other things because um, you'll know it has dignity just by being in the fourth house of being in Cancer. You could say double dignity, so strength, you know, and it may also be well aspected. I wouldn't be surprised. The harmonious aspect, the trine or, you know, sextile, in some cases conjunct. So, uh, over the hanging man, your person likely has an advanced degree too. I think they, um, their energy with between Taurus and Cancer, they really like to show up and they like to do the same thing every day. Um, they're very traditional, this person. I'm not going to say conservative, but traditional. You know, um, whatever the religion was of the mom here, your uh, Sagittarius mom archetype um, for them, um, likely would be their religion. They're not someone that would likely uh, explore the eighth house and, um, and end up giving themselves to a Wiccan coven in the Pacific Northwest, for instance. Not really their type. Probably won't be telling you that story. I imagine they have a good uh, relationship with the siblings and the moms. You may hear about that. Um, this seems like someone, too, with the hanging man, that they're um, very cautious. They might also have a Mercury in Taurus. So they're, they're very slow. And they're very cautious, so right off the bat, this is another person where I don't think you're going to be getting the stories about uh, the Jerry Springer show, drama, relationship, whatever, from their past, okay? Uh, given this person might be a little bit older, older than their first uh, Saturn return anyway, um, because, you know, they're cautious, they move slow, they're pretty well balanced, they, they grew up in a healthy environment, they, they know what self-esteem is, this person, see? King of Wands. This is in the sexual position. What do we have here? Venus. That, that's an Aries. Venus there. The Three of Swords. Going to go with a Gemini Mars. And the Mars might be challenged somehow. How? By aspect. Possibly by conjunction. But uh, you know, a square, an opposition aspect with the Mars and Gemini. Um, and their Venus um, in Aries, very strong for them. You know, it's where they take after their mother. Another thing they'll tell you, ah, got this one. Uh, they will tell you that they know the king's looking over towards the Hierophant. Um, but it's really looking, to me, it's kind of looking for his queen. I mean, you have the king and queen of wands here, guys. You know, <laughs> it's what we got, the king and queen. So, um, they're going to tell you, uh, whether a man or a woman, uh, that the mother favored them of all the children. This is something the mother doesn't tell children. They might tell them when they're adults or something. I don't know. Or they may just know. But they know this, and it's probably true, and they kind of t favor the mom. <coughs> <coughs> if she's a Sag, the mom probably wouldn't have an Aries Venus, but 
you know, could have a, a Sag Venus could be uh, their sisters, right? Uh, sister Venus is for sure. Sister uh, Simpatico. So they will have a history. They're they're not real aggressive or anything sexually. They probably don't. I'm not going to have like a lot of partners. Um, but um, they will show a, def a definite uh, airy sort of hunting energy in terms of love, you know, relationship. Not the sex so much, the seduction part of it, right? Um, they'll, they'll really be into that. And so, you know, probably really good at it. You know? They might come across a little more sedate. Again, they're coming across very traditional. Um, they might listen, particularly with this hanging man down here. They're going to be someone that you're with them. That they're, they're going to be listening more than talking, you know. Uh, but once they focus on you as a love interest and your soulmate, so that should come pretty quick. Um, you will begin to feel this fire of the Aries in them. Um, that may feel quite different than their the, their persona that you see uh, originally with them. And honestly, with the Gemini here and Mars, I think it, you just have to say, they want to hear it. They want to hear, I love you. They want a lot of communication. And they love sexy talk. You know, I don't know if you do. Um, <laughs> but um, but they do, um, Leos. Um, so, and we probably like can't get enough of it. So, um, that's going to be a makeup. And I, and I feel like it's a little bit of a weakness. It's a little bit of like their Achilles heel. Um, it's almost like uh, like they're like a cat that gets the prey. But almost like they don't know what to do with it once they got it. You know? And that's something, you know, soulmate can show them, you know? Something in adolescence. They might tell you a story. If you ask them, it could get specific here. Um... Um, where, you know, that's where we sexually create our identity around adolescence, right? And we get feedback from our environment. Are we a hot commodity? Are we not a hot commodity? And uh, we're formulating our sexual strategy. So it might have been something there, kind of negative, that kind of makes them kind of insecure. So what, what I would say to this, being their soul man, I give some advice. Um, they're probably uh, more tender than they might act because well, with the Venus could be a lot of pursuit, a lot of passion um, and uh, with the Three of Swords here as a Gemini energy uh, with Mars um, they could talk some shit, I mean just talk some shit just but I think like on the inside they're a lot more tender then and so they just can kind of bite off more than they can chew this is like their thing um and it's like the answer to that is you just slow down a little bit you know and and you know hey it's okay i'm into you we're good um a, a little bit of extra reassurance you know um you know it's like they they sort of have trouble the hanging man under the hair font too it's that kind of thing. It's something like in adolescence, could have been a little bit later in, in, in the, the teenage years. That You know, it would have been like a kind of humiliation, something sexual. So not something they're going to post on Facebook or anything, but it's the kind of thing that they might tell their soulmate when you start telling each other your stories. You know? Now this is in their core values and lifestyle. Here we see death. We have Pluto. We have Scorpio. We have the eighth house making a show here. And strength, death over strength, core values and lifestyle. You remember when I said that they were going to take after the parents, in this case probably the, just the mom, in terms of their uh, core values, in terms of religion and spirituality? Well, it turns out mom was a new age telling you this is mom was a new age big time and uh <laughs> so uh this person could be if they're not a psychologist they could be a therapist of some kind um some kind of a radical social worker um this person 
their mom could have been eighth house. Uh, I was saying maybe they're not eighth house. Well, it didn't dawn on me. Well, you know, it, it's like uh, however we grow up, that's what we see as normal. Uh, so if mom was all about uh, tarot, and not possibly, uh, in astrology and uh, numerology uh, and um, spirits and uh, guides and angels, um, then why wouldn't this person be with this strong Taurus energy here and this Cancer moon? They're very traditional. They're very, uh, very grounded, huh? Um, person. You know, I think their sexuality, what goes on with them is that they're so grounded and they kind of lose a little death, right? Orgasm, a little death. They, it's a little bit bugs them that they lose themselves with that. And, um, you know, it may not even be that big a deal. It's just a, a little something that kind of gets them. Um, but with this, I mean, they could be an energy worker, light worker, you know, healer whatever i mean that right there and with strength um so another thing with death and strength you know they would have had uh, to gone through a, a lot of um difficult periods that clearly were areas uh, in their life times in their life you know, when they had to grow and change and evolve and so they're kind of uh, used to it and i this really leads to kind of a a spiritual or light worker person here really I get that feeling you know um, and here with the strength card coming under it it's like they really want to dedicate themselves to this you know they're really committed and in any case what that means I love that you know um, they'd be very committed to whatever they give themselves to you know, in this very deep way, is death card, there's something about what, whatever it is they do. They're going to want the same energy around the house. I mean, this is a person that's deep and probing and uh, real. Um, and they're going to want the same thing with, with you around their home. You know, this person, is they're not going to be able to do shallow, um, that kind of energy here. So let me know, guys. Uh, we have the moon, the sun. We might possibly have uh, Mercury as well, along with Venus and Mars for them. And let me know. It's a kind of a predictive read, so it. It's, I don't envision this being someone in your life now, unless it's just happening. Um, and I just want this to identify them, so we know that that is your soulmate. And get back to me and let me know. Do uh, give me a like, a thumbs up uh, if you could. Appreciate it and subscribe. Thank you, guys.